everybody Debbie here from Crafty Wafty and tonight we are going to make a start on our lovely Christmas Advent book um, now I don't know if any of you saw my little video at the beginning of the week just to show you what came in the kit but this is what we're going to be starting on tonight so I'm just going to open this up just to show you okay so let's just have a little look so in here we've got all our lovely little boxes with the little numbers on etc etc and um, so it might as well be decorated and everything else as well so we are going to make a start on this tonight okay so i'm just going to tie that up and pop that to one side i like to make sure everything's all nice and tidy there we go so let's just pop you out of the way over there and um, yes yeah, so the other evening i went through what you get in the kit um i went through all the bits and pieces um you, you know in terms of like all your papers the embellishments all your decorative bits your patterned papers your mintes all of those sort of lovely goodies and of course in the kit you don't just get the um to make the christmas advent book you also get to make the little exploding box as well so here we are it's a little exploding box okay but we're not going to worry about this for a couple of a couple of weeks we're going to do that probably in week three so the plan is is to sort of go ahead with this for the next two weeks to make the little book and then we'll do the exploding box okay so i'm just going to pop some of these bits to one side now just a little tip when you go in and have a little look at all your lovely goodies what i've actually done is is i've taken out all the bits that i'm going to want for the exploding box because I want to make sure that I've got enough really lovely decorative pieces to do the outside. I'm not too worried about the inside because the inside layers and that I can use um, scraps and stuff for. So the idea is, is that I just wanted to make sure that I picked all the decoupage panels and everything else. So that's what I've done. So outside exploding box kit. And I love these little clips because these clips are just fantastic for, for when you're sorting things out and you're doing stuff like this. So I've decided that I'm going to have that on the top and then I'm going to have, as you can see, I've put these little post-its on as well um, as to which ones are going to go around the outside. So I've already sort of made that decision. And then um, this is for the very outside of the exploding box. And then inside the exploding box it is another lid. And this is the page that I'm going to use for the lid. So what I did first was... I. As I said, I went along and I picked out all the bits I wanted for that. So I'm just going to click them together and pop them in with all my exploding box bits, which is just here. And we'll say we'll see you in a couple of weeks time. Now, if you didn't get to see the kit um, or you'd like to buy the kit, it's on our craftywafty.co.uk website. And you just literally go in search down for the kits and if you scroll down you'll see it on there just 39.99 and i think it's a really good bargain and this is something that you can make and you can use for years and years okay so it's one of those little family heirloom type things if you know what i mean okay so as i was going through sorting out what i wanted for the exploding box so i have already gone ahead and sorted out what i wanted to decorate this one with this book and I wanted to do it a little bit different using some of the the papers in a different way so at least it will give you two different sort of choices of what you can do with your papers so again I've selected and I always do this I always go first with all the um, the key elements so that oh, I'm, somehow I've stay, um, clipped them all together all in one go what have I done here all right let's have a little let's put that to one side you see i was too super efficient with me little clips these are so dinky right okay so so this is what i'm probably going to use on the front of the album um the advert book to sort of decorate it with and i've got a couple of decoupage sheets there so there will be some elements i'll be taking out of those to to do the front okay the outside um of 
the cover itself so this is going to be the back page then I've got the spine so I've already pre-cut that um, I've just sort of picked up because I quite like the dots pick up with all the dots on the or the little baubles on top of the top of the hat um, and also the colours really sort of work nice but I've left the front cover a little bit more traditional although you are picking up the blues and that as well as it's coming across and you've got the white background which sort of picks up so that's my that's how the album's going to sort of look and then I haven't quite decided yet but when we come to it I will decide which sort of sh scene shot I'm going to use for the front to then put my penguins on uh, I don't know if you can see here um, that's what I sort of did on here I sort of selected part of one of these and then I built up the little penguins on the front there so that's what I'm that's where my head is sort of going but I'm going to do it slightly differently for this one I'm going to do a bit of fussy cutting on here as well but when we get to that I'll, I'll show you but what I always do is always sort out how I'm going to decorate the outside of the cover first um, and then pop that to one side one to make sure that I've got big enough sheets to be able to do that and two I don't normally decorate the cover until right at the end because at least then um, it won't get damaged while I'm sort of working on the inside inside bit okay so they're those bits so we'll come back to those at some point maybe not today could be could be next week we'll see how we get on so bearing with that in mind I have also selected the inside cover bits as well okay so these bits so I've decided I'm going to do that for the inside spine and these will be the inside covers as well and I put little little tabs on here so I know exactly what the sizes are so when we come to that that will remind me all right to let you know what they are so I've got those as well plus we'll also be doing a few little um sort of finishing touches on these sheets before they get before they get stuck in so I'm going to pop that on there and more importantly organizing how I was going to do the the lids for the boxes so the base boxes are black okay but uh, obviously we've got pattern paper to go on the top of the lid so I've decided um, I went ahead and I've cut these out these were four inches by four inches square and these will make the make the little box lids so again sort of looking at this I wanted because last time I didn't use any of the little fish paper and in our kit we get these little cute resin fishies let me just see if I can grab them like so which are just so cute that I want to be able to oh it's not just knocking everything over there we are um yeah so I just wanted to be able to sort of have some of this paper on show so that when I put the little fishies here and there it sort of all ties it in but these are so cute as well I really do like these and like I said you get those in with the kit as well so that's all good stuff so what I've done here is I've cut four but six designs now obviously it's up to you how many designs you want to have within yours you could go four designs but have six boxes of each totally up to you but I like to sort of really mix it up a bit and again I've sort of gone with because I've got the hats and scarves on the outside with the dotted I've sort of incorporated that obviously the penguins you've got to have the penguins inside there's no two ways about it and we got some words and again like all the colors sort of blend in and pick up the other ones and then we got the snowflakes and these sort of linking across as well so I'm hoping that when they all finally get put together they're gonna look great and that's what we want okay so I'm gonna pop these all to one side because before we do any of that we need to make the cover itself and that's what we're going to be doing now so in your kit you have let's just find it two pieces of mount board it's lovely white mount board okay and you have some a4 adhesive sheets and you have two 12 by 12 black 
pieces of cardstock as well this cardstock's really good actually i think it's about 250 gsm so it's a nice thickness to it okay so first of all we're going to cut these up to size now these should be cut at nine inches by seven inches and in order to be able to get the spine bit out we need to make sure that we are cutting it the right way okay so just to show you on my ruler here here we are um Let's have a little look. So nine inches. So along here, if I, if I cut it down there for the nine inches, it's going to then leave me a strip, which will then do for the spine. OK, so I'm trying to sort of maximise and use, use this really carefully so I can get the most out of it. Whereas if I try to do it along here, nine inches, well, it is nine inches, I suppose I could come up, but it will still give me that. So whichever way you do it on this particular thing, it's not that bad. So that's good. So I'm not going to use this on the on the grid. I'm going to use the big one. I'm getting the big guns out now. Um, right. So let's make a start. So we're going to cut these two. Okay. Now this particular one is twelve and a bit. So I want nine. So I'm just going to measure that along there so I'm going to cut the nine first and um, let's just line it all up make sure that it's all nice and square that's it there we go so just double check as my granddaughter would say measure twice cut once so I needed nine one two three four five six seven eight nine and I've got more than enough coming down here for it to trim off for the seven so that's great so let's give that and I always whenever I'm starting a new project I don't know about you guys but I always go with a new blade so let's see how we do especially when I'm cutting anything sort of like mount board or construction board I always make sure that I've got and always go through a couple of times just so I get that really nice clean finish so that's so at the moment that is just a square so I'm going to pop that to one side and I'm going to do the other one and then we'll come down and trim off the excess so I don't know about you but today here it's been really quite nice and warm can't believe it we're like in the middle of September and we are still getting a bit of sunshine I'm hoping that wherever you are, you're getting a bit of sunshine too. And it has been quite warm. It's been about 24 degrees as well. So I can't quite believe it. You know, as we're walking around in short sleeve tops, you know, I was half expecting to be wearing big, thick, fluffy jumpers and everything by now. But um, thankfully, we're not quite there yet. Right. OK, so that's all done. And now I'm just going to trim this off for the seven so and then that will give us the shape at the front for our thing so again just double check in here we are we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine and then seven across like so and we're just going to trim trim this off and what i would say is always hang on to your bits of construction board or your mount board that you're cutting off because you never know if that's going to come in handy for something else so i always like to make little 3d things and stuff like that so it's always good to hang on to those bits but i think we as crafters we are a bit a bit of holders I, well i know i am um i can't be the only one i'm sure i can't be the only one um but yes okay so let's just tuck these down and just again make sure that we've got the measurements right so that's good with seven across like so i'm just going to cut these that's it lovely i'm going to put that to one side because you don't need that yet and uh, i'm just going to pop that on there and now to do our spine bit so the spine now when i made the original one i actually had it a little bit wider i had it at two and three quarter inches because i wasn't really sure how much gap i was going to get but i'm actually going to reduce that down to two and a half but if you want to still do it two and three quarters you've still got enough left here to do that okay but i am actually going to trim it down to 
two and a half. Um, so I can just line that up. Now, please do, you know, pop on and say hello. It's always lovely to, to see, you know, who's watching tonight. So let's just zoom that along. There we go. Just cut in this last bit. And we only need one of these, obviously, because we've only got one spine. This bit, I wouldn't worry about. We'll pop that bit in the bin. Right, okay. And so there we are. So that is our book cover cut out already. Okay, let's have a little, little look, see what we've got. So we're just going to line these up. So you've got your, that there, and then you've got the spine bit as well. And that is what's going to make our, our book. Right, so the next bit that we need to do is to put the adhesive sheet. Okay, now this is A4. All right, and again, we need to make sure that we cut this in a way that we're going to get the maximum out of it. Um, now, obviously, as you can see, when I put it on there, there's not, it's not going to work that way. So we're going to have to turn it around so that it's going to stick like so now whatever whatever you do don't throw these bits away because these bits are what we're going to use to do the spine all right so just to give you a heads up on that so what i'm going to do first is peel off one side if i can find the edge like so and then i'm gonna here we are take that off way this is where it gets a little bit sticky Okay, and I'm going to now line this up on the on the double-sided tape. Okay, don't panic too much if you don't get it quite lined up because we can trim it trim it down. But obviously, don't just stick it in the middle because you won't have enough to do the spine as well. So I'm just going to line it up as best I can with the corner. And as soon as you drop it down, that's it. There is no going back. All right, so that is that bit done. Just going to give that a little bit of pressure. Okay, and because this is still quite tacky, I'm just going to run my knife. i take it down there and I'm just going to run it along the edge. Like so. Just going to take that off. Wow, that is, I don't know about you, I always call this live, you know, because it's live and it's sticky. <laughs> um. And I'm just going to pop this bit on there just to sort of use up that. And just drop that down, make sure I've got that fairly even across. Let's give that a good, there we are. Okay. And as you can see, I'm, I'm missing a little bit here. So some of this will just sort of stick on the bottom. And then I can use that to, let's just take that down off of there. You can see why you need a really sharp pen, um, pen, oh, look at me, knife to do this bit. Okay, and then I'm just going to literally stick that against that on the bottom of the spine. Now, the reason why I'm using the um, double sided sheets is because when you put the paper on um, the card, when you cover that, it gives it a really nice flat finish. And that's just what makes it, gives it that extra little professional look to it. So now I can go in and just trim off all this excess. So I know that that is going to sit right up against it. All these little sticky bits, we'll just get rid of those. And we're just going to trim down this side as well. Like that. Okay, let's just pop that out of the way. And as we can see, that is beautifully on there as well. So that's two sides done. Okay, if we need our Bernie, our Bernie Burnish, and we'll just come along and just give that a good rub along there just to make sure that is beautifully flat and we've got no air bubbles. Like so. Okay, and then I just now need to do the others. The other one so we'll get the other sheet okay and 
this time I'm just going to peel off peel off this side it's just a little fiddly bit there we go right, okay so I'm just leaving that bit on there because I know I'm not going to need all of this sheet so I'm just going to try and preserve some of it as I stick it on so while that's there let's just get something to weight that bit down there we are and then I can line this up push that back a little bit so the sooner you can get it into the corner and that lined up along the edges just makes it a lot easier right there we go that's on like that and then I'm just going to fold that bit back over and then I'm going to trim round because then that protects that extra bit that I've not used, if you see what I mean. So I'm just going to cut in down there. That's it. Okay. You'd be surprised how handy this stuff comes in. There we go. So that's a bit I'm getting rid of. Let's just see how we're doing. There we are. And now that's just saved me that bit, which is a nice big chunk, which might come in handy for another project at some point. There's always an odd little bit that you need, if you know what I mean. OK, so let's just flip this over, give this a bit of a burnish. So we've now got both sides of our album or our book done. And these are the bits that are going to get stuck down onto our black card but we need to sort that out first so i'm just going to pop that over there and we get our two sheets so like i said you're getting all of this in your kit okay so let's just have a little look and see how how we're going to do this so what i want is is i'm going to need a bit of an overlap so you can see with the edge here i'm going to need a bit of an overlap for that to to hold together and then we are going to, let's just move this up a little bit, okay? And then obviously we're going to stick these down on there, okay? So you can see just exactly um, how big you're going to going to need it. Now I know that um, for this particular album, I, I do believe I just literally ran a bit of red liner tape down there. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just pop you out the way for the minute. So I'm using um, 12 millimetre red liner tape. You can get this in our shop as well. So just pop that in your in your basket. It's 50 metres, so it lasts for ages and ages. Okay, so I'm just going to run red liner tape all the way along, like so. I'm just getting this. The scissors let's just trim trim that off there we go okay so again i'm just going to give that a little burny burnish like so here we are lovely jubbly and then the idea is to then stick this onto there okay so i don't know if any of you have seen my previous videos when I've been doing the albums or making the albums um, I do a little trick with these because sometimes to try and stick this on and line it all up in one way can always be a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of a nightmare oh I think we've got young Emily watching us hi Emily thanks for the thumbs up um, right so I'm just going to peel part of this back and I'm just going to give it a little crease Okay, because then that will give me something to pull once I've lined this on here. Okay, and I literally I'm just going to line it up at the top and the bottom over that red liner tape. And I'm just going to push that bit down that I've peeled back. Now I can go underneath and pull the rest of that red liner tape out and straight along and we are done. So if I just flip this over, voila. That's all stuck on beautifully. And we're just going to use our little burnishing tool just to go along and make sure that is suitably stuck on there. Okay. Now, one thing you have to consider when you are putting the album cover together 
is where you're going to want your seam all right now obviously i don't want the seam although i know it's going to be decorated but i don't really want the seam to be at the front of my album um so and do i really want it to be on a crease when i come to come to fold it because that could sort of you know weaken weaken it on the outside so the best thing to do is try and work out the best place now normally i go with it sort of coming halfway down the spine okay just so that i know that it that it's there and it's not against any hinge parts of the book so it's going to be good it's good to go so that's what i'm going to be doing so and don't worry about all this excess coming around because we will go around and trim that off before we sort of stick it and put it together so this is the first bit that i always put in then i work outwards okay now if you're a bit you know if you feel that you need a you know want to keep some of the black card then by all means just shove it over a little bit but make sure you leave yourself about an inch to come over the edge so i could if i wanted to just move this right over which will then give me all of this card here i don't know if you can see all this card here left if you wanted to but you get plenty of card and everything's done so i'm just going to go for it and what i normally do is use my lovely ruler as a guide so i'm going to come in here now this, if this is 12 by 12 okay this is where the mass comes in i'm really sorry guys i know thursday night i'm giving you a mass lesson here we are all right so nine from 12 is three yep yeah. divided between the top and the bottom that's one and a half inches so that's roughly how much far i'm going to come up and that is where i'm going to drop that drop that in okay and i can see where the line is and just how that's going to sort of sit nicely across that hinged bit there okay or that folded bit now a little trick is is that when you try and get this stuff off the back end of these sheets it can be an absolute nightmare i don't know about you but i always find i always have a few issues with it because it just doesn't come off so you can try if you've got nails you can try with your nails and see if it's going to come off but look you see i'm trying and it's just take the rest of it off so what i do is is i just literally do a little score in a corner get my little pokey tool and i just take off take off that bit see that bit comes off yeah and then i just come back on the other side and now i can literally pull the rest of that off without it taking the tacky bit off underneath okay so just a little trick for you there right i'm lined up with one and a half inches i'm going to line this up sort of in the middle now i've lined up the edge down one of here so it can gives me a rough idea of of where i'm going so it's about an inch off just so i get that center and i'm just gonna drop that down and breathe that's the first bit done okay how easy was that yeah really nice and simple so i'm just going to give that a good burnish okay and now we're going to come to the next bit so let's just move this over and again i'm going to come one and a half inches up from the bottom and because i've now got this bit in place and that is stuck that's giving me a good buffer okay now what i want to do is leave about a quarter of an inch gap coming up okay because I need that in order to for the hinge and that to work on the on the album cover. So I'm going for about a quarter quarter of an inch. All right. So you can see where I've left that. Now you can. Um, there are places that you can actually buy the guide um, like the spacers for. Uh, let me just see if I can find mine. I can show you what I mean. Oh have a little look 
I like to show you the different tools that, that can be used to make your life a little easier. But I also like to show you how to do it if you haven't got them. All right. So you can buy these sort of like little teas. OK. Um, now, I think these come from a company called uh, Craftelia. OK. And the idea is, is that they, they are different thicknesses. So this one, they normally have on it what it is. So I believe this one is quarter, quarter of an inch. So if I tuck that in there and then I can butt that up against it and it will square it at the top and the bottom. So I wouldn't need necessarily to use, use my ruler. OK, but I just wanted to show you what you can do. So you've got two methods there. So I'm going to leave that there just for the minute. All right, and you can get these different thicknesses as well. So let's just do our little trick on the corner to get this tape off. Okay, so I've just sliced through that. I take off one little bit. Try not to stab myself in the process. How many of you have done that? Stabbed yourself with a craft knife or... <laughs> Or a pokey tool. I think it's a occupational hazard when you're a crafter. Right, okay, now I can take all of these off. Now, again, I'm just going to peel part of this back, a bit like I did with the red line of tape, because I just want to make sure that I get this in the right position. So I'm going with, with the T there, and I'm just going to hold that and just see that's nicely fitted. Let's just move that out of the way so that can lie nice and flat against there so I can go right into that corner drop that down like so now I can take the rest of that out and then it's all it's all in place like that there we are so that's one done and then I can take that out and it's given me a nice quarter of an inch gap okay and now we're going to just come along to the other side. Now, if you haven't got anything like this or you feel a little bit ooh, wobbly with a ruler, what you can do is cut yourself a strip. Now, you know what I was saying about you keeping the, um, the spare bits of mount board. You can actually cut yourself a strip of mount board a quarter of an inch and use that as your spacer. So I like to give you lots of lovely tips for all of this. Right. So we're going to line that up there. There we are. Now I just need to cut the corner like so. Like before, I'll just take off the tape. Is that all right? That's all sticky underneath. Lovely. And then I'm just going to peel this back. So there we are. Okay, and I've taken it right off of, of this one because I'm literally just going to drop that right in now because I've got that lined up. So that will sit right in against there, like so. And then we just drop that right down. And there we are, and there we have it, okay? So we've now got our three pieces stuck to our black card and then what I do is is I use a ruler and I literally go around and I'm just going to trim off an inch all the way round. you don't it's you don't have to be exact with this but it just gives me a little bit of a guideline um because then it you know I can then sort of fold this over so I'm just gonna slice down there up there a little bit just a little guideline put that up that can come right down and I'll come around the corner on here here we are I'm just going to take it so I'm just taking the inch from the edge of the mount board like so and come right down there okay down far enough on that one that's it take that off and then we're going to turn it around we're going to do the other side like so 
at the end of the day you're not going to see see when it's folded over but it's just just a nice little garden i'm just going to take that bit down there that's it come all the way along like so that's it i can get rid of that bit there we are and then the final bit oh, oh here we are our last last slither of card just coming down here here we go like so all right i didn't quite cut that bit off there we are let's just take that down a little bit right okay can you believe it? We have nearly made our album or the cover for our book already. Okay. Plus by trimming that down as well, it just gives us a nice edge to sort of work with. You haven't got big bits and little bits, so it just makes life a little bit easier. Now, what I normally do then is, what we're gonna do is, um, back to my red liner tape. I'm gonna run some right along the inside right to the end and then I've got to come out on the outer edge so I'm going to put two strips of red liner tape along okay so let's and like I said I can just butt this up against it right the way along so it just tucks in that's what I'm doing there there we are I'm just coming to that last little bit just cut that. Oh, my lovely scissors. There we go. And and then I'm going to come along again, and I do this all the way round, okay? Because this is what we're going to be using to when we fold it over to fix it down. So it gives us that nice finish at the end. That's so why I'll go all, round, all the way around on the inside. And then I'm going to come all the way around on the outside. Just tuck that along there. Okay. And don't worry if it overlaps a bit on the corners because we will trim the corners anyway. Okay. I'll just come along here. So you can see by doing it, um, using the 12 millimeter red liner tape, I will be able to get two strips just on here. But if you use nine millimeter, you'll be fine with that as well. There's not, it's not split hairs, but it just happens to be what I'm, I'm currently using. But you can use the nine millimeter, right? So now I've got double on there. Oh, I've lost my end. There we are. I'll come all the way along and I'm going to sort of use the other red line tape as my guide. I'll come all the way along like so. There we are. So I know I'm probably, dare I say, I'm using the Christmas word, but you know, before you know it, I mean, I can't believe we're halfway through September already. And before you know it, it'll be Halloween and then that'll be it. Everybody will be rushing around after Christmas presents and ideas and, and what have you. So if you want to give this as a gift to somebody, that would be really lovely as well. This is why I'm sort of showing you now, really, um, so that you can make this. And you could easily make this in a, a couple of evenings or if you sort of, you know, maybe one, one day at the weekend or something like that you can get this done um so it doesn't take too long okay all right so now i've stuck all the red liner tape all the way around i'm going to use my little burny burnish as i call it and i'm just going to rub that all the way along making sure that that is firm and i'm going right into the crease bit along here as well okay making sure that that is nice and stuck down okay here we are you can see with the red liner tape when it is because you can see where the air bubbles are um so i'm just going to go along like that and we're just going to come along on this one okay 
Now, with paper, obviously paper is made up by mashed fibres, so I need to stretch the fibres a little bit to come up and over, up and over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the edge of this and I'm just going to run down on the inside just to stretch a little bit of pressure all the way around just to help help with with the folding okay so it's just going to stretch these fibers a little bit okay and then we just got one more side to go here we are that's it just run that along there okay and now what we need to do is mitre the corners now again um, there is lots of tools that you can buy to help you with this okay but if you so let me just show you one so you can use something like this which is basically you it's got a like I don't know if you can see there you've got a little drop in there and and, and your corner is going to fit in like so because that will sort of slide in over the edge and then let me just move it over so you can see so that would slide in over the edge there and you would trim that off and then that will give you a nice mitered corner but if you haven't got a little gadget like this and i do believe this was from craft tellier as well um then what i suggest is is whatever thickness your board is is to come out when you cut so let me just find a smaller ruler here um is to come out how I, however deep so say that was one eighth of an inch I would then come out one eighth of an inch and then cut it at the diagonal so I've got enough that when I bend it over that it's going to cover my corner all right but a little trick that I use which some of you may have seen when I've done the albums as well is I use a sharpie pen and I just go in and I just color in the corner with the black just in case I cut it slightly adrift at least I know that that corner is going to be blended in, if you see what I mean. So let's just pop this on here and we're going to go through and do this. I'm literally just going to cut across and out. Now you can see there that I've got enough black card that's going to fold over onto that edge there. So let's just do this on this one. We'll go all the way around. like so so i can show you here a little bit better because obviously i've colored in the other one but you can see here i've got the depth there there's going to be more than enough to come over but if i'd cut that too short so i'd cut it there i would black in that corner like i've just shown you on that one just to cover up any any little mishaps okay um all right so we're just going to use this but there are other tools that you can buy on the market um i've seen one which is like a square it's got the markings on and the depths for depending on how deep the board is that you use and stuff like that so if you're into making albums and things like that it's worth sort of investing in something like this but if this is just a one-off and you're just doing this you can do it as i suggested all right okay so here we go I'm just now going to go round and give this paper, because if you remember, I went round with the bone folder. I'm just going to ease it up a little bit. All right. I'm just going to give it a little wiggle just to sort of stretch those fibres so that when we come to it, it's going to fold over nicely. So we're just eking that over. Like so, all right. I just want it to have that bit of room. I mean, you look on the outside here, you can see where we've gone along, and that. And now that we've gone and sort of gone with the um, bone folder, it's just helping to stretch those a little bit. Oh. All right, okay, we're just going to ease that along as well, and then we're just going to gently push it over just to make sure and I always find that the longer lengths are a, li a little bit trickier but if you get it folding over initially 
all right it's going to make make it a lot easier when we come to glue it and stick it down that's it right okay we'll take well we're using the tape aren't we we're not gluing it but you know what i mean right okay i'm gonna just give that a little little stretch all right we're going in people we're going to take off the red liner tape we're going to do one side at a time so i'm just gonna you hear that squeak <laughs> it makes me laugh when it does that it squeaks right we can trim that off now i'll be honest normally i've got a bin right in front of me and tonight i don't know what i've done with it um i was at a craft craft crop at the weekend so it's probably still in the bag um so please don't judge me but everything is ending up on the floor at the minute and i'll worry about it later okay right so here we go so i've taken off one side so what i'm going to do is, is i'm gradually going to go over and i'm gradually gonna that's it smooth it down as i go along and i'm pulling that as tightly as i can and then i'm going to get my little bone folder my little bernie burnish and we're just going to rub that down and just stick that down like so okay that's one side one side done now i'm going to come round and i'm going to do exactly the same on the other side i always like to do opposites there's no particular reason i just find it easier to do opposites here we go and squeaky sounds a bit like a mouse good job the mickey the cat's not in here you'll be thinking there's a mouse around oh i have to tell you though guys when i <laughs> I got home from work yesterday, walked up to my front door and they looked like there'd been a murder. There were bird feathers everywhere. And I was like, oh no. But then I realised that Mickey is not out an outdoor cat. So I knew it wasn't him. So he's obviously off the hook here. He's not a suspect. So <laughs> there's all these bird feathers everywhere, but no body. So I'm hoping... That there was lots of feathers and the bird managed to get away but there was no evidence of of a body so i like to think that you know it got away okay i know it's nature and all the rest of it but you know we don't like to sort of find it all strewn across your lawn that's for sure right okay so again we've gone along here i'm just going to run that along just to make sure that is all down there we are and now we're just coming to the little bits okay now in the corners you'll find um that there's a little bit of an overlap so i will just tuck those in um just so that when that comes into those corners and it folds over we've not got like a little bobbly bit right i'm just going to take these last bits off there we go there's one and two all right so i don't know if you see what i mean here if i can show you look see where you get you get the little overlap little bit here so i just give that a little nudge in so that when i come to fold it over it's going to it's gonna gonna have a neater finish and when i am folding this over i do just stretch it over a little bit as best i can just give it a little pull as I put it in and stick it on there and then once again over with the Bernie burnish we'll just give that a little press in the corner just to flatten those a bit but there you are so you've got a nice sort of neat corner on that now and now we're just going to do the same on the other end but yes, yeah, so honest to goodness, there were so many feathers, I really didn't <laughs> didn't quite know what, what to do. And nobody has come forward. We don't know who the culprit was. There were no witnesses by all accounts, so we've got no idea who, who the cat belonged to or anything like that. So I think it's just going to have to be a bit of a mystery. Right, let's just tuck these bits in like I've done on the other side there we go and now I'm just going to stretch that over like so just give that a little like that. 
go along with our little Bernie burnish and actually you can see now that you've got quite a nice black edge round on your album front of your advent calendar now before I fold these I just want to give this a little bit of a crease because we've not stretched these fibers that are here in the middle I'm just going to run that along there a little bit run that there along there a little bit and I'm just going to give this a gentle that's it and there we are and that is the cover for our advent book so I think it's you know it's surprising how quickly that sort of comes together really um there's the scene going down the middle which obviously we're going to cover anyway so I think that's that's always good but but that pretty much is it for the time being as far as the cover is concerned so I think the next thing to do is to we're going to put that to one side for the minute and I'm just going to show you the covers that are going to go inside now I did I did pre-cut them already so let's just get these up so here we are i've got my little inside spine okay which will sort of sit there okay and then obviously we've got these bits that are gonna gonna sit on there as well now obviously i've got big bit of black um big bit of white showing there so do you remember we had that bit of off cuts from the from the black okay so what i'm going to do is and i've got two little bits here so i'm literally just going to trim down on one side and trim down on the other just to cover up that white bit in there okay so this is what i'm saying always hang on to your pieces of black cardstock because everything in the kit you should have enough there to be able to to do that now this is nine inches deep or oh. wide so we're just going to trim this down and i'm just going to do it just under the nine inches so let's go eight and seven eighths i'm just going to line that up and trim this off so i'm going to do the same on the other bit So, so we are absolutely maximising and using every bit of the paper and that within our kit. All right, so there's nothing, nothing to waste. Okay, and what we're going to do is is that these will just come together and just stick over like so, and then obviously when we fold that up, that's going to cover that all if you wanted you could sort of cut that in half and then do it so you're just covering up that that bit there but we'll stick those two bits on together okay now i'm going to use some glue for this because i just need it to have a little bit of wiggle room as i line this up so i'm using the good good old book binding glue there we are just tuck that in there we're going to do one bit and then we'll do the other bit like so i don't want that on the outside there we are okay and i'm just going to line that so i know it's going to come over the edge like so there we are and then this bit will just butt up against that bit because this will be covered up anyway so you're not going to see that All right so that's down like that and then the last little bit of glue here it's going to stick this on there we are okay All right, i'll just butt that up against there We've got that nice panel bit going in. That's it. Just hold that down. A little burnish across there. And then when we've got those creases, I'm just going to go along and crease that in. 
making sure that that sits nicely. This is what I'm saying about using the wet glue. It just gives us that little bit of wiggle, wiggle room. So now if I fold that up like that, that's it, just stick that down. Right, I just need to let that dry now. Okay, and once that has dried, then I will be putting the spine cover bit that I've cut here, and that is what's going to sit sit in there. Okay, and that will cover that up, so that will be quite nice. And then we've got these bits here that are going to come in either either side. And that is pretty much how the album on the inside is going to look. But before we get to that bit, I just need to go through a couple of little decorating tips and things like that we're going to do. So because we've got the black background, um, often or not, the pattern paper has got white core to it. So I like to use the Distress Ink. Okay, so this is black soot. So I'm just going to run along here and just, and it starts to cover up that inner white core bit of the patterned paper. So we're just going to go along. Now this spine piece here was cut at eight and three quarter inches by six and seven eighths of an inch. I know it sounds very precise, doesn't it? But uh, I know it's not metric. I'm an imperial girl. Um, <laughs> But I think when, you, when you're working with paper and that, a lot of the paper comes 12 by 12 anyway. Um, so we'll just stick with that. So I'm just going to go along and do this for all three pieces. Now, these bits that are going on the inside of the covers are, again, eight and three quarter inches by... Um... No, what am I doing? I lied. I apologise. They are, right, it's eight and three quarter inches by six and seven, eight inches for the inside covers, but the spine is eight and three quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. Where did I, you see, I was in a rush this afternown trying to get everything done. You know what it's like. And I've written, and I've actually written there, look, inside spine, eight and three quarter inches by six and seven eighths, which is not right. It is two and a quarter inches, okay? So I apologise. Right, let's sit that. But these bits are right. These are eight and three quarter inches by six and seven eighths. So we're only human. Let's go through and carry on with this. Right, and we're just going to ink up across like so. There we are. Right. Now, once we've done that, um, on the original advert calendar, um, I did what we call little faux stitching, which is just little black lines. I don't know if you can see like little dotted lines going all the way around. Now, when I, okay, I'm gonna, it's confession time. I was so excited about making it that I didn't do the faux stitching until after I'd stuck it all down and all together, which made it, well, not impossible, but awkward to try and do that. So my tip for you guys is do the faux stitching while you've got the paper out and it's not been stuck in, okay? Um, so I'm just going to show you what I do with this, okay? So I'm using using a very fine liner. Um, this one, you know, they come in different um, nib tips, thicknesses so this is a 0.8 but I do also like to use a 0.5 um, let me just grab one of those and then I can just show you the difference with the thicknesses let's have a little look where's my 0.3 I've got a 0.3 just sing amongst yourselves while I'm just having a rummage uh, let's have a little look oh for five right okay I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this on screen, but let's let's give it a go, shall we? All right, I've got three pens here, so here we are. Right, 08. So this is the thickness for a 08. Okay. 
this is the thickness for a 0.5 and then I've even got here a 0.3 and this is the thickness for a 0.3 let me hold this up can you see the difference so 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So depending on what look you want, okay, I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to do 0 0.5. Now, if you are really worried about, because this is going up, going up this bit, and it's quite a long way, and you've got to do little dashes all the way along, then can I suggest that you use a ruler to do this bit? Um So you can set a ruler alongside and then you can do your little lines going all the way up. If you're not confident, just going for it. Me, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be a rebel tonight and I am going for it. OK, so I'm not going to do all of it now. I'm just going to show you. So the idea is, is to get that line as close to the edge of the paper as you can. OK. So I don't know if you can see. All right, so you just literally as close to that edge as you as you can. All right, let's just bring that up close to the camera. Can you see that? All right, I don't know if you can see that. All right, let's bring it up closer. There we are. All right, and literally you just go all the way round with it. And I have to say that actually this is can be quite therapeutic, you know, because um, you're having to concentrate. And if you're like me, you've got your tongue sticking out <laughs> when you're doing it. Um, but I think it just helps pop the paper in that it just gives it a little extra je ne sais quoi oh gosh i'm teaching you french now as well i mean we've had the mass and now we're having french right if you don't like the dots you know the little dashes you can do a dot 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 and then a dash and a dot 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 and a dash if you want or you can do a little kiss and a dash and a little kiss and a dash or you can do a little kiss and a dot 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 and a kiss whatever you want you can make it up you can even do little squigglies if you're no good with your straight lines, then you might want to do a little wiggle, wiggle line going. Or you can do a little wiggle and then a couple of dots and then a little wiggle and a couple of dots. So you can do lots of different variations. OK, you can make it up as you go along. All right. Nobody's going to judge you. OK, right. Let's get back. So we're just going to quickly go around and do this one. And then we're going to look at sorting out our lovely boxes. And they're going to go along there. So I find that, as I was saying, this is quite therapeutic. And sort of concentrating. And just sort of doing your little dashes. And it just finishes it off. So when you come to do yours, like I said, do it before you glue it and stick it down unlike me who <laughs> who stuck it all down because i was too excited and then realized i hadn't done it and then i had to go around and do it all so thankfully i did it before i stuck the the boxes on so it wasn't too bad but i just sort of go along like so and i'm just going to come along the bottom here okay that's it right okay that's all i'm going to do for this one for the minute but so just to show you so that is it without and that's it with i just think it helps pop it a little bit yeah so when you come to glue that down and stick that down on there it's gonna just helps sort of bring it all together and then we'll do the other two so when we come back to when we get to next week when we start putting the boxes on i would have gone around and done all of that okay and just to give you a heads up that when i'm gluing these down i will glue i will use glue for this bit but when i come to stick these bits on oh, there's those fishes again they're so cute 
Um, <clears throat> so when you get carried away, Deb, you get carried away. When I stick these bits on, I will use the red liner tape. And the reason why is because obviously this bit of paper here is going to take the weight of the boxes. OK, so I want to make sure that this is steadfastly stuck on before um, before the, glue, um, the boxes go on and that. All right. So so that's just to give you a heads up on that. All right. So these will be covered in red liner tape and then stuck down. And I will do the faux stitching going all the way round. And this one I will just glue glue on like so. OK, but I need to finish off those bits. Right, so I'm going to put this to one side now. Okay, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're not doing too badly. I'm just going to have a slurp of, oh my goodness, okay, cold cold tea. Anybody else drink cold tea? Mm. I don't know about you, but when I get caught up in these things, I sit, I'm so in the zone that I forget to drink the tea. Right, now in our kit... You get your little pack of black squares. Okay, let's just open these up. These little clipper bags. Hang on to the clipper bags, okay, because they'll come in handy to put any embellishment bits and pieces in when you finish decorating. Okay, um, all right, so in your pack, you will get 24 of these, so just the right amount. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to score these because what we need to do is turn that into that 24 times. OK, now <clears throat> I'll be honest. All right. When I when I made mine, I did use this gadget. This is a explosion box board. OK, it comes from We Are Memory Keepers. OK, it comes with its own little bone folder all right and um so i thought okay well it's great if you've got the money to go and buy one of these you know if you've got if you've already got a scoreboard then just use that and i'm going to give you the measurements on how to do that um on how to sort of score these ready okay so on here is actually got this is really nifty little gadget actually but on here it's got the lid okay now that distance from there to there is one eight one inch and one eighth okay so one one inch and one eighth all right and the idea is is that you're going to score around all four sides okay like so because then you end up with oops a bit squiffy there right okay Right, there we are. So you end up with with that one inch and an eighth going all the way around and you've scored it four times. So you've got like like nine little boxes, as it were, or squares. Well, not quite squares, but you know what I mean. Going all the way around. And then this is going to become your base of your box. OK, now on this explosion box board, there is a diagonal score. So while this is in... We're just going to do the diagonal from the outer to that first crossover point, okay? And I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same, same again, and then the same again, and then the same again, okay? So if you've got one of these boards, great, because you can use that and do that. But if you haven't, let me show you what you can do with an ordinary scoreboard. All right, let me just grab my scoreboard. There we are. Right, okay. So you haven't got one of those fancy explosion box boards. You've just got your box standard scoreboard. All right. So let's just take another one out. So as I said, the... No, no, Siri, I can't. He does like to interrupt me when I'm busy. <laughs> right, okay, so here we are. So I'm going to do... Not sure I understand. Oh. Is there something else I can help with? Um, Siri, no, thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Are, are we finished? I think we're finished. Right. 
So here I've got one inch and one eighth. So I'm just going to come around and I'm just going to score one, in, one inch and one eighth there all the way around. Like so. Okay. And then what I do is, is I line up, line up the diagonal going from one point to the other. So making sure it's in a rim and I just bring that point down so that it still comes in connection connecting with that um so just sort of line that up like so but if you find that a little bit fiddly then the other way of doing it is literally just getting a ruler and marking it across where the point is and across there and then just bringing that bone folder down as well and you still get the same sort of effect all right so I just wanted to show you if you haven't got one of these boards what you can do to um to do that okay um right let's put that for the other scoreboard like so so what you need to do is spend some time just going around and scoring all of these and I'll be honest I personally found the quickest way was to go around and do all four sides and then come in and do the diagonals. Up to you how you do it. And I did all 24 all in one go. So I ended up with a pile that looked like that. Okay. Now, once I did that, I then took all of them and I just went around and I just eased those creases and I just folded it okay and I literally just went around and did all of that and then I came in on the corners and I just teased the corners in all right so those diagonals are just going to come in and I just pre-creased them okay so it's important to do that because when you come to glue it the last thing you want to want is for it to sort of pop them can't get me words out now for them to pop out while you're <laughs> gluing it down so pre-crease everything okay and i found it easier just to go ahead and do all of those all in one go as well so i ended up with a pile that looked like that okay and then what i did was i then went round with the bone folder and i just went in and i creased now a little tip okay when you're folding these in, you're going to glue these so that these two flaps come over the top. So they're all tucked in on one side. OK, so if I show you what I've done here, I don't know if you can see, I've glued it so that the two triangular bits will come in on the inside. Yeah. And I've done it opposite. OK, what I didn't do, because I, I just feel that it just makes it a nicer, neater box. OK. If you glue it that way and then you glue one going that way, so you've got them going round all the other way, that's fine. It's not a problem. But I just found for the strength factor that by having the two overlapping, it's really going to hold that together. OK, so what I did was I then went round, as I was saying, a tricky little rascal, and I just creased in those folds. OK, so that the paper knows where it's going to end up. All right, and I just creased those down on both sides and gave a nice neat finish because what I want is is that when they cross over and fold that you're still getting a nice straight edge on that side. All right, so just take your time with it and make sure, okay, that when you crease it that those lines are in there, okay, that it all tucks in nice and neatly so that you should end up with it looking Looking like that, so you get nice folds on the corners and your folded over bits are, are all good to go, okay? All right, so you have 24 of them to do, okay? And then we're going to glue them together. I'm just grabbing some of these other ones, hold on, because mine are falling off the table. Right, so again, glue... <coughs> Good old book binding glue because I find that it's easier, it holds it together better, um, and it's quickly um, holds it, you know, it, it grabs it quicker. 
so you're not having to hold it you know sit there and hold them for ages but this is where these come in handy these little clips these little mini bulldog clips i keep going on about these so these are fabulous all right so what i do is is i put glue let me show you one side let's go with this right so here we are it's my glue so I know which way these are going to fold. They're going to fold in, fold this one is going to fold in onto that side. So I need to make sure I put glue on that half of the triangle. I go right up the edge and I need to do the inside as well. Okay. So I know that that is now going to go in like that. I then fold that in half, fold that in half like that. And then I hold that and I just get one of my little clips. And I'm just going to clip that, clip that together. And that's just going to hold that for a minute. Yeah. Then I'm going to come in and just do the same on the other side. So that's folding in. And so I, because it's the opposite, I need that glue side to come down here. So I'm going to glue this bit. I'm just going to glue that bit. And then I'm just going to glue because it, that corner needs to glue together. Like so, I'm just going to ease that in. You can see why now I said about making sure that you really crease these before you come to do this bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to clip that, clip that on there like so. Yeah. Now, literally, by the time you've done the second one, this first one should have held. All right. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. So I'm going to put glue in. It's a little bit fiddly as you start to do all the other, the other two corners, but you get plenty of glue in there. I'm going to fold that. So now that flap comes over. Actually, I can see I've not got any glue on that corner bit there. There we are. Um, so that's now going to fold, and that's going to fold over the original one. And then I'm just going to clip it together. If you haven't got these little mini bulldog clips, do you know what? paper clips will do um you know or you're just gonna have to hold it for a couple of seconds um i'm a little bit impatient when it comes to things like that but um right okay so as this is gonna fold in i need to know that that bit's gonna have the glue bit on it so it's just gonna tuck that bit in like so a little bit of hang on so that folds in hang on have you done it the right way deb yeah, you have, yeah. So even I was getting confused then. Right, that's going in on there. Let's just pop the lid back on the glue for the minute. Okay. And then I'm literally going to unclip that, fold that one down, hold that in place and clip that on. Like so. Okay. And then you just leave that leave that to dry and like i said you've got 24 of these to do so here's some i made earlier um now the other important thing to do is with these is that once you've got them all glued together i've then put red liner tape across the bottom because i want these to be able to fix sturdily to the um album cover or the book cover okay um because again if you're going to put stuff in here there's going to be some weight and i need it to have that strength so i've gone ahead and obviously i've made all 24 boxes and i've put the red liner tape on as well okay so on the bottom here now these should be dry already so I'm just going to pop that on so let me just show you what i did with this all right um let's find the edge here we are okay so i literally now again using the 12 millimeter red liner tape i'll just sort of put that on trim that off then i went in and put one in the middle okay and just cut that off and then one on the outside edge like so there we are and then I just literally, I said, cut that. Right, okay. And then.
then with my little burnish tool I just went over and just made sure that they were sticking properly and while I have my burnishing tool I just went in on the inside of each box just to really give a good press down on those flaps to make sure that they are all done all right so that is your 24 boxes so you as I said you get these in your pack you get the little squares so you just need to score them up and go ahead with those okay so that will keep you out of mischief for five minutes i know it did for me well more than five minutes to be fair but anyway you know what i mean so they're all the lovely little boxes okay now the next thing that we need to look at are the lids now the lids are done in exactly the same way but Again, I just wanted to show you a couple of different things with these. Now, with these lids, um, so these are all my colours that I've, or the patterns that I've chosen. Okay, I think I've lost one on the floor here. Let me just have a little look. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right, okay. So these are my patterns, okay, that I'm going to be using. Now, again, um, obviously, these are going to be made exactly the same way as the boxes, okay, as the box bases. But these are slightly bigger. <coughs> oh, excuse me. These are these were cut at three, three inches and seven eighths by three inches and seven eighths were the black boxes. So that's what they were cut by. Okay, but these are cut at four inches by four inches. And again, what we're going to what you're going to do is is get your scoreboard okay and just going to go around and score all of these now like i said if you're using the explosion board um scoreboard then i use the lid setting for this so i'm just going to go around which again as i said before is one inch and one eighth okay all right, so I'm going to sort of go around and do those, and then I'm going to come in and do the do the corners, the diagonal corners. Now, there's a couple of things that I need to point out to you, okay? When you come to um, put your boxes, box lids together, is to look out for your directional paper, okay? Now, obviously, this is striped, so when this gets folded, so let's just fold this one. Oh, actually, I'm using the fishes. Oh, no, I'm using the fishes. I've scored that the wrong way, but there we go. I'll fold, refold that that way. Okay. All right. So, because I want the fishes on show. All right. And then I'm just going to fold the corners. Now, when you're using directional paper, you need to be really careful which way or how you are going to... Did I crease that one? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, which way you are going to fold the inside flaps. I know it sounds a bit odd. <laughs> and yes, we're talking flaps, people. Come on now, get over it. Um, because that can have an impact into how these boxes are going to sit on the bases when they're put in your book all right so let me just file that one in there it's because i've creased these well i don't think that one got scored no i think i missed that one let me just rescore that one there's my little score thingy there we are right okay okay there we go right all right so when they're directional or if they've got a certain way to go, all right, you need to work out how you're going to, or where you're going to put these tabs down. And I'll show you what I mean. So here we are. So here's my little box. Okay. Now, I know that for this, this paper has got a certain way that it's going. And I know that that is going to get covered with the numbers. Well, it depends, actually, when we get to that point, you might decide to leave the papers and just put the little numbers in the corner. You don't have to use the discs and what have you. It's really your choice. But 
when you when we glue these into the cover okay into the inside cover i'm going to make sure that all the boxes so all the like the hard bit like the, where the flaps the inside flaps are i'm going to make sure that they actually all line up the same way okay um i think i normally do them that way actually all right because when you come to then put the box on the top okay you want to make sure that the flaps are the opposite way all right so instead of having the flaps all going the same way um you're going to have them going the opposite way so depending on how you fold these will determine which way they're going to go so if i'm saying that these are these folded um triangles are going from left to right okay then i need to make sure that the flaps are going to go top to bottom okay because then when i sit those on on the top then you're going to have that thickness going all the way around at the same depth let me show you it might be easier to do that so these are going top to bottom okay so we're going to put a bit of glue on there and on there now this is really just for directional paper okay when it comes to the other the other paper it doesn't really matter um you know like the dots it won't make any difference but when it comes to anything that's directional you know that's got like a top and a bottom to it you need to Get that just right and we'll just fold that one in i'm just going to hold those in together so as you can see on this one i've gone from left to right and now i'm going from top to bottom because my fishies are the other way yeah i want the fishies to sit so that they are going to be facing the right way so that my fish aren't going sideways okay so let's just put some glue in on this one, like so. And then we'll just put some glue in here because that's where we're holding those together. Right, okay, so I'm just going to fold that in. Fold that in, there's my little clips. Hold this all together. Right, okay. Let's just put the lid back on me glue there we are all right so now you can see that the flat bits that have been folded over have gone from top to bottom these ones are from side to side so that when that sits on okay you're going to get a much better fit to your box okay so we're just going to give those a moment to, to set just give that a good crease in there okay make sure that they've all stuck down properly okay like right. like so okay so there we are so when i come to put the lid on i'm now knowing that when these go into the book they're going to go from left to right and then this will then go from top to bottom and that will sit and give me a nice finish to it yeah and that's a nice snug fit all right so that's what we're looking for now the other reason why i say that you go the opposite way is because if you want to put what i call a little not if you've got something called a notch punch you can put a little notch in your um in your lid that will make it easier for people to to take take them off so let me just show you what I mean. So let's have a little look. Right, where's my little notch? Okay. So this is this is um, another box from another advent that I've made. But this is what I mean by a notch. Okay. So what you don't want is to then cut out the notch on the side that you've got the flaps overlapping on the inside you want it on the opposite so this is why you need to make sure that you can see here that 
that is nice and smooth i can easily punch that out and then that is going to sit nicely over my box so you've got the little notch bit showing like that so that when that's glued down somebody can then get their fingers under there and that just helps take that off better or easier okay so you need to think about how you're gluing these when you come to when you come to do this all right so if i was going to use the notch when on here obviously i'm going to be cutting out this side because that's smooth and that side and my fissure up the right way then it's not going to it's not going to sort of damage the the sturdiness of the box if you see what i mean okay all right, so I just wanted to sort of give you that little tip. Now, this is a We Are Memory Keepers notch punch. You don't have to do it. I know I, on my um, original one, I haven't used it on this one. I have used it on, on other ones that I've made, but um, I didn't use it on the original. You don't have to do that. But if you did want to do that and you haven't got one of these, then you could just use a... A half circle punch if you've got one of those you know like a circle punch and just punch half of it out um then that's up to you but it's optional okay so i just wanted to make sure that you were aware that you can do that now the other thing that i haven't done on this particular box but i could have done if i wanted to is go around and do the faux stitching going all the way around so if i was going to do that then I would have done that on the bit first before I folded it, <laughs> which I now realise I should have done. But hey, I'm just telling you these little things so you don't make these little little mistakes. But the idea is, is that, yes, you could go around and do that. And then you can go around and do your inking around the, around the edge of the box as well. So you're covering up that white that is showing of the box. Okay. So fairly short one tonight because i appreciate that we've got um lots of boxes to go and make and i don't think you guys are going to want to sit here and watch me making hundreds of boxes for the evening um but i just wanted to sort of give you that tip so if you are um, getting the the kit and you're making this along with us that's fantastic so what I would say is, is that what you need to do is make sure that when we come to next week, um, that you've got all your, at least got all your base boxes done. And if you've got your lids done and that you have your album or your book cover done. Okay. And that you've done, if you're doing faux stitching, you've stuck that all around and all the rest of it. Because when we come to next week, I'm going to show you how I work out how to evenly stick the boxes on and then obviously do all the decorating and put the ribbon on and stuff like that. Okay. And then pretty much once we've done that and decorating the cover and everything, then we should be, we should be there really. So <clears throat> hopefully you've enjoyed me waffling on for this evening. Like I said, a bit of a short one, but I just wanted to sort of, you know, get everybody going if you haven't got the kit and you want the kit we've still got um some available on the store so that's craftywafty.co.uk okay um go in onto the website click down onto kits and you'll find it they are just 39.99 and you get the kit and everything to make the the advent calendar book and also the exploding box all right so you're getting like two for the price of one there. All right. And that, like I said, it's got everything in there. So when you come to make it, just watch, watch across and do that. And thank you very much, Tanya. That was really lovely, your comment there. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so just go away and, and have a go. All right. Really. And, and what I love about these, they are just fantastic. OK, I love I love the look of them. And you can make them using any colours, papers and and so forth the, the principle is is the same but if you wanted to make the same kit that i've made with these cheeky little chappy penguins then please do pop along to crafty wafty and don't forget to chuck in your red liner tape and book binding glue while you're at it all right so 
thank you so much for watching i'm now going to carry on making another 23 box lids okay and i will catch up with you all next week take care see you soon bye <music>